Minecraft displays have come a long way in the last 15 years. We went from using just torches in Minecraft Alpha, all the way to now with fully working RGB displays using just redstone. But how did this happen? What kind of witchcraft is going on here? And how is it even possible? The year was 2010. Minecraft Alpha had just been released to the public. Minecraft was different back then. It wasn't something that millions of people played every day, it was just a small game made by some random dude. But regardless, its simplistic nature and freedom to explore made its way into the hearts of the players. And almost immediately, people started experimenting and making structures with all the different blocks in the game. Most people made things like houses or underground bases, but for the nerds, well, they had a different idea. You see, there were two items in Minecraft Alpha that were especially interesting, redstone dust and redstone torches. These weren't your typical blocks. They were put in the game specifically to mimic real life electronics. Redstone dust is like a wire and a redstone torch is like an inverter. This created a subsection of people that, instead of building a house, started building digital circuits. In 2011, Paradox1123 made a full-on calculator. And soon after that, the internet FTW made a 16-bit computer. It's safe to say that even though Redstone wasn't super popular yet, the builds people made were already ridiculously complex. But even though people practically speed ran building electronics, there was something missing. There was no block in the game for a display. So when people wanted to show a number or some pixels on a screen, they usually just used torches. One player took this a step further though and used a texture pack to make torches look bigger, making them easier to see and creating what was arguably the very first display with square pixels. Then when repeaters were added to the game, they became an option as well. One of Captain Sparkle's first videos showed off a display that used repeaters to show text. And in April of 2011, a player named Ix used a display made out of doors in their game of Pong, which was honestly super creative. There were a few other unique displays at the time, and overall, the methods were pretty scattered. Between torches, repeaters, and doors, there just wasn't a consensus on how a redstone screen should be built. Until in June of 2011, when a new block called the Piston was added to the game. It goes without saying that pistons were revolutionary. They allowed players to move blocks automatically, creating a ton of new possibilities for circuits. And when it comes to redstone displays, they were pretty useful too. By pushing out or pulling in blocks, you could make a screen that turns pixels on or off. From there, you could use those pixels to create segment displays, graphs, or whatever you want. Pistons quickly became the most popular display option, and with good reason. They were easy to read and cleaner than any other option in the past. So when Minecraft 1.0 came out a few months later, it's no surprise that redstone builds using piston displays showed up everywhere. This player made a working Sudoku game using them, and this player used it in Space Invaders. People were posting their builds with piston displays on every website they could find, even ones that put way too many ads on the sides. And that's one of the reasons that today's partner, NordVPN, is so important. Some ads are not as innocent as they seem. Sometimes, clicking on them sends your device's IP address and configuration directly to another server, giving a potential hacker everything they need to launch an attack. That's where NordVPN steps in. By connecting to one of their hundreds of VPNs, your device's information is no longer sent, and you'll be safer browsing online. Just go to nordvpn.com slash mapbatwings to try it out. Every purchase of a two-year plan will receive four bonus months as well. And on top of safer browsing, NordVPN will enhance your Minecraft experience too. If you're ever downloading a mod and there's something weird about it, Nord will let you know, thanks to the threat protection feature. Or if you find a Minecraft server that's only available to certain countries, you can use a VPN to still join. Plus, if you're not happy, NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's essentially risk-free. Again, just go to nordvpn.com slash mapbatwings to try out everything they have to offer. The reign of piston displays didn't last long though. In March of 2012, just eight months after pistons came out, a new block was added to the game that would change the face of displays forever, literally. That block was, of course, the redstone lamp. The redstone lamp was simple. By default, it's off, and when it's powered, it's on. This was obviously a huge deal for every display ever. Everywhere you looked, people started swapping out pistons for flat screen lamps. And I would argue that this is the most important point in display history, not just from the player's perspective, but from Mojang's as well. By introducing the redstone lamp, Mojang basically said, we see you, we like what you're doing with redstone, and we wanna make it easier. And for the first time in Minecraft's history, redstone displays felt like they truly belonged. Not everyone was on board with this magical new block though. At this point, we're well into version 1.2, and Minecraft has already exploded in popularity. So naturally, with millions of people playing the game, there was a divergence of preferences. Some people like MaxSGB stuck with pistons and continued to make crazy builds with them. 
Others swore to only use lamps and pioneered some of the first flat screen pixel displays. And then there were people like Seth Bling and FV Disco who didn't conform to pistons or lamps and decided to create a brand new type of display using maps. You see, when a map draws a pixel, it looks at a small area of the world to determine the color. If the majority of the blocks in that area are red wool, for example, then the pixel on the map will be red. So these guys figured out that if you put a bunch of different colors in one area and leave one spot empty, you can control what the majority is by changing what's in that final spot. Making it blue will make blue the majority and display a blue pixel, or making it green will make green the majority and display a green pixel. This was an extremely cool technique, and it was the first time a display could show more than two colors. Every other technology so far, like torches, repeaters, lamps, and pistons, only had two states. But a map display could show 11 different colors. So naturally, people began to wonder, what else is possible? If we can go from 2 to 11 colors, what's stopping us from achieving more? And is it possible to make an actual RGB display? The screen you're watching this on right now is most likely an RGB display. On the outside, it looks like it can show millions of different colors. But if you zoom in, it's a different story. Every pixel actually only has a red, green, and blue light, corresponding to the red, green, and blue cones in your eyes. And by varying the brightness of these three lights, pixels trick your brain into seeing different colors. For example, right now, there's no yellow light coming out of your screen. It's only red, green, and blue. But the pixels are so tiny that your eyes can't tell the difference anymore. So was this possible in Minecraft? Well, no one really knew. I mean, it certainly was with command blocks, but redstone hardware-wise, it just didn't seem like it. An RGB screen would need to not only show red, green, and blue, but be able to change the brightness of them as well. Plus, the pixels would have to be small enough to effectively trick your eyes. Fast forward to 2013, and Minecraft 1.5, the redstone update, hits the scene. Suddenly, there were way more redstone components to play around with. Comparators, hoppers, droppers, activator rails, blocks of redstone, and more. And the amount of redstone builds online absolutely exploded. But the looming question of an RGB display was still unanswered. It would be a full year until someone finally posted an attempt. In August of 2014, a player named Raven Shadows made a post titled, RGB Screen, No Mods, No Command Blocks. In this post, Raven showed that if you place red, green, and blue stained glass and put light sources behind them, it'll glow red, green, and blue. And since each light source can either be on or off, this technically creates eight possible colors. So how did it look? Well, you have to squint a little bit to see the colors properly, but honestly, it's not bad. And the reaction to this was extremely positive with many people citing it as one of the coolest inventions out there. So was this it? Was this the answer to RGB screens? Well, at the time, yeah. There weren't exactly a ton of people trying to make it any better, so stained glass was thought to be the best answer for a while. Time went on, and 2013, 14, and 15 brought tons of new things to the game, as Minecraft was going through one of the most transformative eras in its history. In 2016, the Observer was added, causing the community to explode once again with tons of new inventions, including smaller displays. Then in 2017, concrete and concrete powder came into the picture, causing the invention of even more technology, including instant concrete displays. During these years, Minecraft practically went through an industrial revolution. People were incredibly creative, and it seemed like there was a new invention every day. But even amongst all this creativity, RGB screens got left in the dark. Honestly though, it makes sense. Why would the average person care about an RGB screen? Most Minecraft builds only need two colors anyways, so lamps or pistons were fine. And if you did need more than two colors, you could usually get away with using maps or concrete. Plus, if you fast forward another two years to 2019, another new technology made things even easier. A player named Angry Salmon posted a texture pack that could retexture the side of redstone dust, and it changed depending on the power level of the dust. A lot of redstoners, including myself, saw this texture pack as the holy grail of redstone displays. Not only was it much easier to use than maps, but it was easier to customize too. If you're making Pac-Man, for example, you can change them to the Pac-Man sprites. In a way, this texture pack made redstone displays feel like a solved problem. But not everyone was satisfied. Some people didn't feel right leaving RGB screens out of the picture. I mean, they hadn't improved much in a long time, but then again, maybe there just weren't a ton of people trying. And in January of 2023, Torb released this video, a Minecraft computer using a brand new RGB screen. The design was really clever. Instead of changing the brightness of red, green, and blue, it changed the physical amount of them on the pixel. Every pixel consisted of three red blocks, three green blocks, and three blue blocks. Then using trapdoors, you could cover up different amounts of these blocks. For example, if you don't want any red, cover up all three of them. Or if you only want a little bit of red, cover up two of them. 
This meant that for each color, there were essentially four different brightness levels, giving a total of 64 possible pixel colors, compared to eight with the stained glass strategy. For the first time in nearly 10 years, RGB screens were back. In 2023 and 2024, the conversation of RGB screens was way more frequent in Discord servers, and some of those people were curious if that screen was really as good as it gets. I mean, obviously it was pretty good already, but it wasn't perfect. 64 is bigger than 8, but it's nothing compared to the 16 million colors on real life screens. Plus, you still had to kind of squint for this screen to work. But the more people tried, the more they realized that Torb's display was kind of as good as it gets. You could make it bigger, using more trapdoors to create more possible colors, but size was really never the issue. The bigger problem was that it didn't actually change the brightness of red, green, and blue, so it simply couldn't look as good as a real life RGB display. And so, it seemed like this was the end of the road. Until Mojang gave us a way to change brightness for real, or maybe mix colors together, there wasn't really much more to do. RGB displays would forever be imperfect. But as it turns out, Mojang already gave us what we needed. In April of 2024, Kane 2 realized that there's a way to mix colors for real, using vanilla shaders. You see, unlike typical shaders like Seuss, vanilla shaders are embedded directly in the texture pack file. They're not used very often, but they're still very powerful, and you don't have to install anything for them to work. They're just part of the texture pack. Kane grabbed his friend Z Pippo and Amino, and together they made this. A texture pack for a 4096 color RGB display. When you put it on, you can use one dust's power level for red, one for green, and one for blue. And thanks to the genius code in the shader, the red, green, and blue actually mixed together, creating a true RGB display unlike anything ever seen before.